Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCD Talk, back today with another video, and today we're going to be doing a Blitz Format deck tech video on Ira. Um, I kind of went over this before, um, a little bit like a month ago about my Ira deck tech, and not a ton has changed, but a little bit has, and so I wanted to go over it because we do have the Battle Hardens coming up with the Blitz being the main format. Skirmish season's right around the corner, I know everybody's knee deep in ProQuest, which you should be. Um, but we've made a lot of ProQuest oriented content, which we're going to make a video talking about week two's ProQuest results here soon. I'll probably come out tomorrow. Um, but I just wanted to kind of go over what I was looking at with Ira because, you know, once Blitz comes up, Blitz is a really interesting format uh, for anyone who hasn't played Blitz in like a big setting. It's very difficult because you can't sideboard, right? So you can sideboard equipment, but you're, you got what you got with your deck. So you want to try to prepare yourself best for all the meta. So with Ira, one thing I wanted to do is control Ira and mid-range Ira are very popular. I wanted to go into more of an aggro-based build because with Kasai having a lot of good new cards and she's pretty pretty insane now. Um, and with Benji even being really good, Bidori is going to be really good. You know, you still have Kano in the mix as always. And then Ira is a top contender. Um, and then you even have a couple other things. Even I think Viscerai is going to be pretty insane if people want to play his tempo plan. So... You have to be really proactive, I think, in the splits meta. You can't just sit back and block anymore. It's not going to work. You're just going to lose, um, at least in my opinion. Unless you're old time, you're just going to lose. Uh, so I wanted to make something that was really aggro-based. So we'll get right into it. Uh, with the equipment, I think I'm pretty sure I had the same thing as last time. Nothing crazy. Um, I run Goliath Gauntlet instead of Breaking Skills. The only cards in my deck that Breaking Skills will affect is the 100 Winds and Pounding Gale. Everything else would be a blue, and I don't want to use it on blue. So... Breaking skills is nice because it blocks for one, but Goliath Gauntlet, when you pair this with even bigger than that, it just gets dumb. Um, if you have a, let's say, a blue in hand and even bigger than that and a Command and Conquer, you pop Goliath Gauntlet before the chain starts, which they know a big attack's coming, right? When you pop Goliath Gauntlet with Ira, if you run Goliath Gauntlet, most people think that a Flying Kick is coming. So they're expecting the third chain link. So they're not going to block out your first or second Kadachi, maybe even your second, because they want to try to block out that third uh, attack. Or they might 100% block out your second Kadachi because they know they're not going to be able to block the third attack. So what you can do is you uh, Kadachi for one, play even bigger than that. Pop Goliath Gauntlet prior to, right? You still have two resources floating, or you could pop Heart and Cross Trap if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, still two resources floating. Um, get your Quicken token from the draw from even bigger than that. Then you play Command and Conquer for nine, because two with Goliath Gauntlet and plus one from Ira's ability, nine with Go Again, um, which is just nuts, right? You have no resources floating, but you drew a card from even bigger than that, and you have a card in hand that you haven't played yet or pitched yet, and that could be, and you could even have one Arsenal. So at this point, you've done 10 damage. They're very unlikely they're going to block out the whole entire Command and Conquer. If they do, they're just going to have to dump their whole hand, um, unless they're like a Rune Blade with a fridge for armor or something. Um, and then you still have two to maybe three cards in hand left to play to possibly get Mass Trigger and all sorts of stuff. So it's just pretty nuts. Um, what you can do with Goliath Gauntlet and even bigger than that. Um, same thing goes for like, um, you know, you Kadachi Kadachi because typically with even bigger than that, you want to Kadachi, you want to play after the second Kadachi with Ira because they're going to block that second Kadachi. So you play even bigger than that after they've committed a card from hand to block out to prevent your master. You know, you play even bigger than that. Um, you draw and then you use that draw made for pitch and you play flying kick, right? Um, and flying kick for, for nine basically. So, uh, it's, it's pretty insane what you can do with Goliath Gauntlet. It's really good for swing turns. I think I've done the most I've done, like when I combine like a command and conquer with it and lighten strike for, for, for seven and then give it go again or five draw a card, give it go again, uh, with the snaps. Uh, I've done like a 20 to 25 damage turn. Um, it's just been pretty nuts. Uh, so it's just crazy what you can do with it. Heart and cross jab. I usually run the main board just because I want to be able to get flying kick or command and conquer off for free, but you can definitely run tunic. Um, it's not required to this deck. It's just it feels good when you can get one of those off for free, especially late game. Um, if you're really trying to push damage over the top to win the game. Uh, Mask and Pouncing Links, I'm never going to run that. I put it in here just to kind of give an example of like, like talk about it, right? I'm always going to run Mask Momentum. You just force them to block that second Kadachi with Ira. Like it's this Mask Momentum is important with every ninja, but it's it's crucial with Ira. Like I don't. If you're running Mask of Pounce and Links, you're just trying to be cute, in my opinion. Sorry for anyone out there that does. Um, it's just, it's one of those things where, yes, does it have uses and it can have, be really cool? Sure. But it's never going to beat the consistency the Mask of Momentum gives you. 
Um, and then run three null rune. I keep mask and play against Kano because I want to make him force him to uh, respect my Kadachis and respect my my mass trigger for the for the deck. So what I had changed from last Ira deck tech like a month ago, if you go back and watch that, is I took out the red flick flax and I took out the red sigil. So I am full aggro now, and I put in yellow even bigger than that, and I put in red pounding gales. Right. Um, basically, I'm trying to get high value out of all my attacks. Use even bigger than that to be able to do swing turns. And then you use all these all these cards just have insane value, right? With Ira's ability, Command and Conquer comes in for seven or nine if you have Goliath Gauntlet, right? And you make the Quicken token with even bigger than that. Uh, Flying Kick comes in for seven. Push the point if you your first Kadachi hit comes in for seven, and you can snap it. Hundred Winds comes in for four. Like you can see the trend here, right? At that second attack, I'm not so much looking to Kadachi Kadachi attack, although I do do that sometimes. I'm looking to mix up my attacks and keep my opponent off guard, right? Like if I can come in with push the point for seven, snap it, and then come in uh, with like enlightened strike for seven or something like that, like that's fine with me. I'm I'm trying to use my snaps when I'm know I'm going to be doing over a 15 damage turn because in blitz, if I like I've had multiple games with this deck where I've done over 15 damage twice in a row, like back to back turns, and you just take all tempo, right? There's no way they can fully block you out unless they dump their whole hand and Unless they know they can come back with 20 damage, you're gonna win. Like if you hit some of these, some of these lines, especially lines like uh, you know, sometimes I'll Kadachi, uh Kadachi like Enlighten Strike or Leg Tap, and then you you razor it, right, to give it go again, or you razor your second Kadachi even to give it to make it plus five or to give it five, and then you come in with your third attack, really forcey master. There's just a bunch of stuff you can do with this deck. Twin Twisters is amazing, this deck. You basically always choose the option of when it hits the next attack gets plus one because you're going to play this on the second chain link. It'll attack for four and it could possibly be given the next attack plus one. Um, and then a lot of these attacks that don't have these crazy effects, but just are great value. Like leg taps a one for five with go again and Ira if you play on the second attack. Um, Pounding gills a one for six or a one for five at the end of the chain. Torn tempo could possibly be a one for six depending on when you play it. Um, I think one thing people aren't doing as much as Ira that makes her really good is don't just Kadachi Kadachi attack. I think that's like the old school way of playing Ira, and that works really well when you have a bunch of flick flacks and sigils and sync blows. But in this deck, I'm looking to like give my opponent really, really horrible blocking situations right off the bat, right? Like if you play a leg tap one for five, uh attack two or push point one for seven with a razor in hand. Like you're just you're you're forcing them forcing them to be in a bad spot, and then even bigger than that is basically your swing turns. I've done really well with this deck. Uh, the only deck that even gives me remote trouble and blitz so far could change. So far is Kasai Kasai because she can value block really well. I haven't played a lot of Dorinthias, and I want to. I haven't played a lot of like Axis Dorinthia or Dawnblade Dorinthia in blitz. Just it's not in my meta locally in in the United States. So any of the Dory players out there that want to jam in some games, I'd I'd love to do it. Um. But Kasai is the only one that can kind of give me a little bit of issues because she can, you know, Valiant Diamond is an amazing leg piece that just can keep consistently blocking out my Kadachis. Um, so it's she has a lot of value blocks, which really helps her. But this is the deck so far. Um, I might add in a few other pieces over here, but overall, this is what I'm running. Um, if I do a pro quest, it'll probably be either Ira or Viserai. Uh, I really like Viserai's tempo plan in uh, Blitz as well, to be honest. Uh, but... Um, let me know what you think of the deck. Let me know if it, if, if you think the aggro version of Ira could be better suited. Uh, if you guys are still old school Ira, that's good too. It's still a great deck. I just want to be more proactive in what I'm doing. Um, yeah, let me know your thoughts on the deck and I'd love to see anyone that tries it out, what you did, what, how it went well, how it went bad, um, and go from there. Uh, but if you like this content, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I really appreciate everything y'all are doing. Like we're over 600 subscribers now, which is just blows my mind i don't know i don't understand how it's happening um but if you like the content please you know leave a like comment subscribe if you have any suggestions on content tell me please um it's not that i'm running out of ideas or anything it's just i want to give you all what you want to see um and katsu content like i've covered so much i'm going to do like a beginner katsu video i know it won't apply to much as much people here but i want to do a beginner katsu video showing like how to play katsu because everyone starts somewhere and at least giving somebody some like you know, general level things to think about will be really good. So hope that works out. But yeah, please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you want. If not me, go to another Flesh and Bread career. Do the same thing for them. I really want to get more people seeing this game, especially with all the events coming up with Indianapolis and with Dallas and with these different callings and stuff like that. I think it'd just be really nice. But yeah, I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Hope you all have a great rest of your week. And yeah, see you.
See you next time.